same as Cadet Captain David Lazardi, and I am the Cadet Commander of CX-20092, Team of Park AFJ ROTC. I'm Athena. So I'm going to teach you how to use our lovely flight simulator. When I went to flight school and I obtained my private pilot's license, I learned how to actually do all these maneuvers, and that's what enabled me to have the knowledge to use this simulator. So um, I have about 50 hours in a real life plane, and I, I want to say 20 on a simulator, because I've used other simulators other than this. At my flight school, they had us do quite a bit of simulator training, and it was very, very much more advanced than this. It's a whole cockpit simulator. So this is very basic, but it's pretty much the same thing. So definitely learning the controls and setting it up correctly with your software. Just learning the controls and what everything does on your panels and even how to use this panel right here because you can pull up a map with that and use visual flight rules to navigate wherever you're going. So because of my experience with flight simulators, um, I mastered the art of flaring. Whenever you're landing, you have to touch your back wheels down first while still keeping the aircraft straight. So you kind of do this kind of maneuver. And it's really hard to learn because most of the time, you either do it too much and you strike your tail on the ground, or you do it too little and you end up getting your first wheel on the ground first and bouncing five, six, seven times before you actually lose the speed and touchdown. Flight simulators are very fun and anybody looking to fly should definitely try out a flight simulator. So first the main three, four parts of the flight simulator include the yoke, which then down here on the floor you have your rudder pedals. And then up here we have the instrument and panels. Uh, so the instrument panels and then these other panels. This one is a radio to simulate talking to air traffic control. And then over here is our transponder. And then over here you have your throttle, your auto throttle control, pitch, and it helps. And then flaps you use for landing. And it's also, you can see it on the monitor over there, that little lever switching up and down, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, and 30 degrees. Then you have all of your switches over here for like your master power. That turns on the screens. Avionics master switch turns on all of your avionics up there. And then there's other, there's other lights like navigation light for when you're up in the air. Beacon, you have to have your beacon on at all times. And then uh, you really want your panel lights to be on. This is your ignition. So as you can kind of see, my plane isn't on right now. The propellers aren't spinning. To start it, I need to use this thing over here, which is the throttle, propeller, and mixture control. So this one is the throttle, or how much gas you're putting into it. This one is the mixture of air and gas, which determines whether you get a combustion reaction or not. And then this one changes the angle of the, pro of the propeller to give you more force. So to turn on the plane, you have to come down here, push it all the way in, and then your throttle needs to be all the way open. You pull it down about a quarter of an inch, down to about the 75 mark. You turn your fuel pump on, and then over here on your avionics panel, you'll see fuel flow, start to flow. And once you see it flow, you turn it off. Then you hold these, and then you check your magneto. Check your right one, check your left one, go back to off, and then you start the plane. So right now, it is started. I can show you this. And now we're looking straight out the cockpit. So to take off, we're going to need to have our uh, landing lights, all these lights on, specific lights on, and then you have your foot down on the brakes. You kind of have to point your toes on the rudder pedal, and those are the brakes down there. So I'm going to pause it to adjust, and then we can take off. My foot down back on the brakes, unpause, and then we pull the throttle all the way to full, keeping our feet on the brakes, and then 
you let go. The plane will start moving to the left, so you have to stomp on the right rudder to keep yourself on that center line. And then down here is your airspeed indicator. So all those moving numbers determine how fast you're going. Once you get to about 55 to 60 is when you want to start pitching up and taking off. When I hit about 100 miles an hour, I want to start pitching up to about 10 degrees to enter the traffic pattern and just take off. And then to get back around the pattern, I'll pitch up to about 10 degrees. To get up to about a thousand feet, I can make my left turn from 21 degrees to 13 degrees. Enter the pattern, roll out, and then I'm 90 degrees from the runway. And if I do another 90 degree turn, be able to see the airport coming up right over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep my eyes on that runway. I'm going to go back and I'm going to drop a little bit of throttle, position myself into landing position. So on your final approach, usually you would take a more square or rectangular path, but I'm coming in direct and I'm coming in hot. So I have my flaps pitched down at 20 degrees and I am pitched down also at 20 degrees. I need to shave a little bit of speed though, so I'm going to do a maneuver called a forward slip, which is where you get a little bit of rudder and a little bit of aileron and you pretty much just lose all your speed doing this and trying to line back up with the runway. So I'm 700 feet in the air right now so I need to get down to ground level. Now I'm gonna try leveling out. Keep leveling out. So I'm at 80 knots. So this is slow flight and I'm going to flare, flare, flare. And I'm going to kill my speed so that I can land like this. I'm going to kill my speed, flare, kill speed more, and touchdown. This is a simulated airport in real life. Um, in real life, this airport is up in Nacogdoches, Texas. It is KOCH AL Mangum Regional Airport. And that's pretty much it.